Today's lesson, we've been talking about some baseball and softball type of skills. And in the other videos, we talked about um, fielding and also with our throwing. So today, uh, I also want to discuss batting. Uh, so you can kind of obviously put all three of these together and if you have enough yard space or you know someplace out to the side of where you live um, in order to put all these skills together and kind of have a little modified game if you will even if you don't have an entire you know lot and you don't have a field to go to and all those kinds of things you can still kind of play some modified little games um, in working with all these skills together or just continue to build and work on the skills and make some fun ga games out of it I'd love to hear uh, some of the creativity about the things that you've been doing with your family at home with your baseball and softball skills. So just to go over holding on to the bat and then how to line up with the ball. So I do have a tee and a ball. I'm just using a kind of an oversized ball so that you can see it a little bit better on the, on the screen. Um, but again, using any size of a baseball or a softball style of ball is going to work really well with working on your batting skills. So I'm working and going to talk about lining up with a tee, just something that it can sit up on top of uh, in order to have a stationary ball, but you can also practice then that advanced level of skill and having somebody underhand toss you a ball as well to work on uh, some of those basic level of batting skills. When we're using a bat, so I just have my daughter's little um, bat here at home just to kind of talk about uh, the difference of holding this type of striking implement. So in some of our other things that we've talked about already with racket skills, with hockey, so this one is a little bit similar to some of our other type of skills where our hands will be together. And this is to kind of create that optimal wrist flick action to get a really good snap and a really good pop on the ball when we are making a swing at an oncoming uh, pitch essentially when this transfers into game like play. So what we want to do is kind of and again, there's a variety of different philosophies, so I'm just going to kind of discuss one of them that you can try and see what's going to work best for you. So uh, in a batting type of thing, you want to have your hands together near the end of the bat. So the closer that we get to the thicker portion of the bat, okay, then the less of the full amount of pressure and power that we can put behind the ball. You can get a little bit more of that contact accuracy when you go up a little bit higher. Um, and a a lot of coaches will call that choking up on the bat, right? So if the bat may be a little bit too long for us or a little bit too heavy for us, um, we can kind of move our hands a little bit up. But you really want them as close to the knob at the end of the bat as possible. I like to line my knuckles up, right? So we call those those knocking knuckles. So I like to line those knuckles up and then our thumbs are just kind of placed lightly on the back of the bat. So what this does for me essentially has this in the fingers of and then this is just kind of that reassurance that I have a good grip on the ball. So what this is going to do is allow, allow a lot of wrist snap action for me as I'm starting to swing towards the ball. Okay, so the way that you want to line yourself up. So the first way that I'm going to show you back here is if as if my camera were where that ball was coming from. So this is the action of where that pitch is coming from. So what I want to do is I wanna line myself up to the side of the ball, all right? So if this were the plate area here, I'm not gonna line up facing my pitcher this direction, right, and having that ball come straight at me. I wanna be off to the side of that, allowing for the bat to be the thing that's going through the swinging motion and not me, right? So I'm gonna line myself up, and if I have a tee or if I have something that I can put that ball on top of to make contact with, I want to put that ball about at the front part of my foot, okay? So I have a back foot here and I have a front foot here. And I want that ball to be a little bit out in front of me. So this is where I want to make contact. If I make contact with the ball behind me, so let me show you to the side here, right? So if I make contact behind me, then I'm not getting as much power through, I'm not getting as much accuracy through, and I may end up just fouling the ball off, right? So what I want to do, is have that ball in the front foot area, and this is where I wanna make contact, okay? So, what I also wanna do is I wanna get this bat a little bit behind me, right? So off of this back shoulder, and just a little bit up. So I don't need anything way up here, I don't need anything way down here, I need something nice and comfortable, 
just raised off of my shoulder. Both of my elbows are bent. I'm gonna be back enough away from the ball so that when I do make contact, my arms are completely straight. You see that? All right, so I'm stepping to the side a little bit here. All right, so again, lining up, I'm gonna be back far enough away to where I can have straight arms to make contact with that ball. I'm gonna have a nice bend in my knees. I'm gonna have that ball just slightly off of my shoulder. And as I start to approach that swing, I'm gonna take just a nice little weight shift step. I don't have to necessarily step forwards. Depends on how kind of wide I start to begin with. So I don't wanna to be too close to start and I don't wanna be super wide to start. <coughs> I wanna be nice and comfortable. I can pick up that foot and all that's gonna do is just kind of start my body into the swing. And then I wanna start with that bat and as I do, my back foot is gonna rotate. A lot of people call this squashing the bug, right? So if there were like a spider or a little bug underneath me, um, then it's kind of like I'm turning my foot, right? And I'm just kind of turning that back foot. My front foot doesn't move. It doesn't shift, it doesn't fan open. What that's gonna do is kind of help keep my hips into my swing. That's gonna provide a little bit of that power, okay? So as I take that step, I start to bring the bat forwards. And again, when I make contact, I am at full straightening of the arms. My hips are facing to where my body contact is. And after I make contact with the ball, then I'm coming around and I'm doing what's called that follow through. So let me go ahead and do that from this side, all right? So again, I'm back far enough away from where my full arms make that extension. I have a nice bend in my knees. I start with that little bit of a shift with that step. I start to bring my hands through and when I make contact, I'm at full straightening of the arms. That bat is just an extension of my arms and my wrist. My core and my hips are facing towards that target. And as I come through, then I have both hands still on the bat and now I'm finishing that swing with that follow through. All right, so again, taking that bat down to the ball, making contact, I'm not coming up underneath it, I'm not trying to swing this direction, I'm coming down to the ball, making contact, and finishing through on my other shoulder with that follow through, okay? Again, if you have a type of ball that might even kind of bounce, right, um, as you progress and advance some of your batting skills, then you can start to work on the timing of that batting swing. So that could be bouncing a tennis ball off of the ground. But again, if I'm using that non-dominant hand, right, which is going to be in the front of my body, I bounce that ball and I start to swing. This can sometimes start to develop some bad habits. So I start looping underneath the ball uh, with my bat. Um, so you want to make sure that you really keep that nice bat swing consistent. Um, even if I'm starting to kind of toss the ball to myself or bounce the ball off the ground to myself. If you do have someone else that can work with you on those skills, again, progressing that advanced level, they can start front tossing uh, that swing or even side tossing that swing to you, uh, the ball. So if I have someone kind of on this side of me and I'm here, they toss it out in front of me and I start to swing. Okay, so that can also help me work on some of my batting timing skills and, and that's that advanced version of increasing my batting level of skills. Okay, so I hope you do have a chance to either get outside or maybe even inside with a, you know, ball made out of a socks or, you know, a paper uh, type of ball with some tape around it on the inside. Uh, if you do have that availability, I'd love to have you get active with that softball and those baseball skills today. Have a great day.